Hi, my name is Jaya Savannah, and I'm a born again Christian. I never thought I'd say those words, and I'm going to tell you today how it came to be. Previously, if you would have asked me my spiritual views, I probably would have said that I was spiritual, not religious. And that's because I was pretty close-minded to the entire idea of religion. I saw what seemed to be a lot of fighting over it. I was really raised without any kind of uh, religious teachings at all, except for one experience in a Baptist church when I was five. And, and it was all hellfire and brimstone, and that was enough for me. I was instead raised to be more metaphysical in my approach. So my mother taught me things uh, like reincarnation. I asked her when I was a young child, what was the meaning of life? And honestly, I think I stumped her. But she said to me that the purpose of life was to get to know yourself. And so it was really this approach that um, led me to be very open-minded about exploring things. I didn't think any type of spiritual pursuit was wrong. I didn't believe in sin. I didn't believe in hell. I felt that we were just supposed to um, explore and, and discover. So I immediately gravitated uh, towards reading um, books, even as a, as a you know, middle schooler, about astrology and the occult. And I um, later started doing things like um, tarot card reading. And I um, ended up in a place that was a psychic training center where I learned how to do a metaphysical type of meditation and uh, psychic readings. In fact, Later, after I graduated there, I became a professional psychic. A few years ago, I went through an exceptionally hard time, and it was a spiritually difficult time for me. I was finding that my beliefs were not really supporting my reality in a way that was working. I went through a year of awakening and struggle in equal doses. The awakening part was where I was having sudden epiphanies. I now know it was the Holy Spirit tapping on my shoulder. But at the time, what was happening was I would just become aware that things that I was believing in the New Age were not true. And it wasn't a logical conclusion I reached. It was just all of a sudden being aware that it wasn't true. And I would question, like, well, how come I'm not praying? Like, why am I doing this law of attraction thing, talking to the universe instead of praying? And I realized I need to get back to prayer. And, um, and I was sort of having these shifts, but I was still very much in my new age worldview. In fact, I was doing professional tarot readings at the time. So I was pretty deep in. It all started coming to a head when things got really dark. I was doing professional tarot readings for a living. So I was dealing with the occult and doing that all day long and other people's uh, spirits probably attacking me. I don't really know the full scope of it, but I also started getting waves of depression. And um, especially because my circumstances were dire, I had to move several times. I mean, literally my life was falling apart and I would try so hard to be positive because that's um, what I aspire to. But the truth is I was having um, thoughts of not wanting to be here anymore. And those thoughts would come and they would go. At times I had the sense that maybe they weren't even me. It felt like it was a supernatural wave of, of, that would wash over me, unlike a regular depression. But it was serious. And I began to wonder if life was worth living. There came a time when the darkness that was surrounding me was so intense. I felt like a drowning person, just begging and praying for God. I doubled down on prayer, but the more I prayed, the more I felt disconnected from God at that time. I couldn't seem to get any sense of Him. My life was still a disaster, and uh, yet I continued to pray day and night. I would stay up late at night praying. I would question things like how to pray. I had always heard, you know, if you pray in Jesus' name, that that gets God's attention. And I wondered if I had any right to do that since I wasn't a Christian. I would pray to God for answers about that and answers about Jesus. But I really didn't um, get any answers right away. There came to be a point where I had just one prayer left in me. Nothing was seeming to be answered. And I just had one prayer. And that prayer was, God, what would happen to my son if I'm not here anymore? See, I didn't care about my life anymore. 
but I did care about his. Compounding my problems is that I began having difficulties breathing. So we'd been through several fires here in Northern California and I was safe, but the smoke had been taking a toll on my lungs and I found it difficult to breathe. And it was a Friday night. I had finished doing uh, tarot readings all day for other people and my doctor's office was closed. I thought I should call my insurance company advice nurse and just ask if there was some kind of home care that I should be doing to take care of my lungs. Well, much to my surprise, she insisted I go to the emergency room. Once I was in the ER, it was a flurry of activity, checking this and checking that. And I was uh, in a room waiting for the doctor to come. I was in a gown. I was, you know, totally not able to leave. And I was waiting. And um, the door to my room was open. It was uh, right outside the central hub of the ER. So there was the main desk and there was doctors and nurses and gurneys going by and clipboards and all this activity out there. As I was waiting, Suddenly, I could hear a man who was just outside my door, and he was beginning to wail and to cry. And he was saying, Docs, you got to do something. Make my mom stop. She's, she's trying to kill herself. She's going to commit suicide. Docs, you got to stop her. And he was so distraught. It was, it was the most gut-wrenching, intimate pain I have ever heard from anyone. And he was, he was continuing to shout out about his mother committing suicide and he was wrenched and I was wrenched. And I was aware then that God had heard every prayer and he took the time to orchestrate this entire scenario for me to sit there and listen to this man's anguish as a direct response to my prayer about what would happen to my son if I wasn't here anymore. So I got about halfway home in my car. It was a Friday night, it was dark, it was late. And I was just too overcome to drive all the way home. So I pulled my car over to the side of the road and I just became awash in feelings of shame because God had orchestrated all these things and proven to me that he had heard my prayers and took all this effort to answer them. And I had doubted him. As I sat there in my car, I felt the presence of God there with me. And that experience I had of that was to feel ashamed of myself. And I began to be made aware of all the places I had turned my back on God. I thought I was a seeker. I thought I was a pretty good person. And I didn't feel good in that moment. I was humbled beyond belief. In His presence, you become aware of yourself from God's perspective. There was a point where He showed me like a mental image picture to explain to me what I was doing. And He showed me like like a child and I was facing a corner and I was looking for God in this, this empty corner. Well, he was standing right behind me, trying to get my attention and saying, turn around, turn around. And I, I felt just like I had completely been missing the mark. And it's so interesting now as a, as a born again Christian, I understand that is an image of repentance. You see, I hadn't read the Bible. I hadn't understand Christianity. I don't even think I have any Christian friends and the ones that I do have, they don't speak about their faith. That's one of the reasons I'm speaking to you now. And so he showed me I needed to turn around and that's what repentance is. It's to turn around from going your own direction and face God and listen to him and follow him. So I was aware I had been following false gods too. I had been praying to Ganesh and asking things of the universe and I was you know, trying to ascend myself and I was well-meaning in all these things. If you have new age friends, please, I ask you to have compassion for them because they mean well. But the world is such that it gets you turned around completely backwards. And in that moment, I also felt his presence. It was showing me my errors and I became grievously sorry for them. But I also felt his love washing over me. I was so awestruck 
by his patience that he'd been with me many times in my life and I've received healings and miracles before and God had been with me this whole time and I'd turned my back on him many, many times and he never left me. The thing I found most objectionable about Christianity, I just knew in that moment it was true. What he said is true. He is the only way, that he is God. And I still, at that moment, I had many questions, things I didn't understand, but I just said at that moment, take me, I'm yours. I was willing to throw my life away, God. I throw my life away to you. Take it and do what you will with me. After that, I knew I was different. I didn't even tell anybody about it for several months after it happened to me, um, but I knew I was a Christian. I knew I was a disciple of Christ and I had to figure out what that meant. I felt the Holy Spirit, which I didn't even understand fully at the time, but I felt the Holy Spirit with me. I felt Him guiding me. He was giving me a hunger to read the Bible. For the first time, it actually started making some sense to me. Um, one thing that was amazing was that the darkness lifted. And now I'm more convinced than ever that it was spiritual attack. It wasn't the same as a regular depression. Christians do sometimes still struggle with depression if you have that kind of biochemical depression. But for me, it lifted. It was warfare. I felt that these things that were oppressing me had, had been taken away and I felt so free. I still had many things in my life that were a mess and lots to clean up. But God was with me and He walked me through all the challenges I had to clean my life up and make these changes. And He comforted me and I prayed to Him and I knew He loved me and I knew He heard every prayer. So friends, that's how I became a born again Christian. And I want you to know that Jesus is real and He loves you and He's there with you whether you believe in Him or not. If you don't already know Jesus Christ, you can find Him in the Bible. You can find Him through prayer. Um, really, it has to come from you. But if you pray for the truth, you will be given the truth. I'd like to end my testimony with a short prayer for you. So Heavenly Father, I come to you this day in gratitude and thanks for all that you have done for me and all you have done for mankind. I pray that anyone listening today be touched by you, that you draw near to them, that you tap them with your presence, whether they are already a believer or whether they have still many doubts. Lord, I ask you to make your presence known. I know that you can reach out in ways that will supersede the usual paths that people will make and that you can touch their hearts and answer their prayers and give them that confidence and surety that you are there for them. And I pray that you bring them into the kingdom and that you give them all of the promises that are so freely available due to your grace and your kindness and all the love that you share with us so freely. I thank you for this. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thanks so much for watching.